me a bit. It's, uh, it's good to be back home with you. Uh, it's terrifying to be preaching in front of such a large crowd. I'm glad it's between Christmas and New Year's and attendance is down. But uh, I do feel very much at home with you, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to be able to share with you. Uh, you know, I've been preaching for... Good Lord, I've been preaching for over 40 years now, and, um, and I have been receiving preaching, sometimes suffering through it and sometimes being blessed by it for about 45 years. So um, I'm going to share with you something today, uh, and I promise you it will be not new. Uh, if you find this new, um, I apologize. It shouldn't really be. It's just very simple. It's very straightforward, uh, but it has an application if you want to if you want to apply it. And um, I'm going to be short and simple. Uh, that's what God has given me the ability to be. My mother promised me when I was very young that uh, one day. Uh, hormones would kick in and my voice would drop an octave or two and I would have a growth spurt and um, I'm still waiting. <laughs> so short is guaranteed both in the preacher and, and the content. I, I uh, will be to the point but I want to have some time for ministry afterwards if you would like ministry particularly at this time of transition between old and near. Old year and, uh, and New Year. Um, I usually have a flicker clicker thing, but um, I lost half of it. Um, so it doesn't function without the other piece. We're going to count on our technology assistant at the back to, uh, to click in time with uh, what needs to be clicked. Um, I uh, taught school for 10 years before I came into ministry. And uh, as a school teacher, I taught, among other things, um, English in elementary school. And I taught during two periods uh, during that time. I taught the, about the first five or six years that I taught uh, was when English was taught in terms of understanding the structure and the grammar, and we would, we would parse sentences, and, and there was a lot of emphasis. And then at the end of that kind of 10-year teaching period, they changed the program completely, and, and the accent was put completely on creativity, allowing the students to write whatever they wanted, however they wanted, and, and not looking for spelling or, or syntax or any of those things. So I, I, I taught under both systems. And uh, I kind of have a preference for the more structured approach. When I uh, was condemned by my previous employers to, to move to Quebec City and learn the lovely <laughs> language of René Lévesque so that I could speak in French, um, it, my, my early responses were because I, I, was, I was assigned to go to the University of Laval and, and study under their French program. But being a person who likes to be a little more independent, uh, my wife went and studied grammar, and I went to La Faculté de Théologie Réformée de Québec and, uh, and did theology courses in French. And I had to read all sorts of material. And, and when I began reading, it was interesting because there were a lot of words I could recognize. I knew the content, which made it wonderful. But I would skip by all the little connective words. And, uh, and then I soon discovered when you jump the connecting words, you lose the sense of a sentence, you know? Uh, so, so I had to learn about, uh, about coordinative conjunctions and subordinate conjunctions. And, and I had to go and do all the grammar stuff that I was trying to avoid when I, I studied that second language. In English, we have a wonderful principle of capitalization. Words that we consider important are capitalized, and words which are less important are not capitalized. For example, in the, the title Alice in Wonderland, Alice and Wonderland are capitalized, and in is not capitalized. Of course, in appropriate French, 
nothing is capitalized, no matter how important it is, which is a wonderful way to do things because it puts everything on a nice equal basis, right? But um, it led me to, uh, to kind of think about the importance of these connective words. So let's go to the next slide. Think about the first one. If we want to connect the two words together, Alice and Wonderland, the connecting word would be? In. in. Wonderful, you got it right. Okay, we're, I'm, I'm really going to go into school teacher mode because there's going to actually be a test later. <laughs> so uh, pay attention. Number two, gifts, Holy Spirit. Oh. Of. <laughs> well, you're doing wonderful. Of course, this is a collective response. I don't know how you're responding individually. We should get you to write these all down and pass your paper to the person beside to correct so you can't change the answers after you know the real ones. Blood of, of Christ. Wonderful. Believe in. in God. You're doing so good. <laughs> Promises for, to, from, well, uh, multiple responses are possible, so I haven't given you an answer there. God, in, for, with, to, God. No, no, we're looking for little connective words. Thank you. Of. Yeah, okay. All sorts of possibilities. So that brings us to the question. Are you ready for this? It's not a theological question, it's a grammatical question. What is a preposition? Does anyone uh, have a definition? Ah. Connects words with words. A word which connects words with words? You have 90%. <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. A preposition is a word which precedes a noun or a pronoun, therefore preposition, right? Position before, to show the noun or pronoun's relationship to another word in the sentence. Prepositions are all about connecting relationships. And, uh, and we have a whole list of them there from some online dictionary. Uh, it's very impressive when you can go online, just go click, 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 copy, paste it into a slide. You can look brilliant. Unless somebody asks you any questions about the content, and then it goes back to what you really know. Next slide. I want to read to you um, from the Gospel. And this is from Matthew, uh, chapter 1, verse 18 to 24. Story that we connect with Christmas, but really more important to us than just the Christmas story. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. The virgin will conceive, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. As it's interesting that this is a, a, a prophecy that uh, came from the Old Testament, from Isaiah, and Joseph in the dream is told, you're going to have, this son is going to be born, and you will call him Emmanuel. 
Do you know how many times Jesus was called Emmanuel? <laughs> by anyone. Never. So, did Joseph disobey? Because baby's born and they call him Jesus, not Emmanuel. So what, what is this? Th they'll call his name Emmanuel. Name, certainly in, in Eastern culture and Eastern religion, is significant of the character or the nature of the one to be born. And so God wanted to communicate a message through prepositions that Emmanuel, Jesus, would be God with us. And that's what I, I, I just want us to, to focus our thoughts, however briefly on this morning, the fact that God wants to be in relationship with man. Because prepositions are all about relationship. And this name, Emmanuel, says to us very, very simply, God wants to be with me. Of all the people that he might choose, God wants to be with me. God wants to be with me when I preach this morning to inspire me by his Holy Spirit to, to help me to communicate. God wants to be with me on Thursday evening when I'm at my lowest and worst and, and, and I, I, I may be the worst example of Christianity that you could come up with. God wants to be with me. That's, that's the whole message that I want to share with you. I told you it was going to be simple. God is the God who wants to be with us. Religion is man's quest for God or for the divine. It, it, and every expression of religion, including those who are religious Christians, it's a matter of trying to get close to God or find God or, or go to nirvana or end up guaranteeing our, our place in heaven. I, you know what? I'm so glad that God has set me free from religion. And I, I'm in a little traditional church in Ganawage, and uh, I have to tell you, it's a wonder that I'm still there because I defy much of what is traditional and religious, and the dear folk I'm working with are beginning to slowly adjust, but they always know that they can, they can expect a little shaking up on their religious side from things that I'll say, from things that I'll do, from things that I believe. Our, our real experience of Christianity is all about God wanting to have a relationship with us. God is always the first mover. God, God is the one who, who had this idea of being relational with people like you and me. So, nothing to do with my trying to get with him. All to do with him wanting to be in relationship with me. Prepositions are all about the relationship between two nouns. God, me, with. God wants to be with me and with you. So, quiz. I have some statements up there. These are true-false. True-false questions are always, if they're well-designed, the hardest questions on an exam. Because you have to read very carefully and... Uh, they can mislead you if you really are not sure of the content. So here are two statements, and I want you just on your own exam paper to, uh, to put the answer down, and then we'll, we'll check the answers. But, uh, but I want you to have your own answer. We're not going to do a group response this time, and I want you to get any help. Is this first statement true or false? The New Testament is never truly new. Okay, in your own mind or on your own paper, give an answer, true or false. And then we're going to ask Ben what his answer is in a moment. <laughs> it was very unfortunate I learned your name this morning. That's a teaching <laughs> thing, you see. That's a teaching thing. When I, when I was teaching, I would have every student's name memorized in the first two and a half hours, because then you could nail them if you thought they weren't paying attention. 
So, and I know some names over here too, by the way, and on this side. So, uh, just stay with me, would you? Okay, true or false? Now we're going to come back to this one in a moment. The New Testament is ever truly new. True or false? And in a moment, we'll, we'll go to Mike on this side to get his answer, and then we'll, we'll compare. So what do you think about the first one, Ben? The New Testament is never truly new. True or false? You got a 50-50 chance. Come on. False, says Ben. All right? The New Testament is ever truly new, Mike. Uh, you, you can't, there's no, it doesn't make sense. It has to be true or false. True. Okay. Box C, all of the above. <laughs> can't do that on this one. Sorry, it's a true or false. Okay. Ben says the New Testament is never truly new. And you said false. How many agree with Ben that the New Testament is never truly new? Well, not very many. Oh, you, you're in the minority. <laughs> you like being special. Good. Okay, but a few people went your way. And, and over here, Mike said the New Testament is ever truly new. True. How many agree with that? Okay. Oh, not a, not a whole lot. Some of you, some of you haven't answered yet because you know there's a little bit of a a hook in this question. The answer to the first one is true. The, the New Testament is never truly new. And the answer to the second one is true. Now they, they look like they're sort of, sort of self-contradicting, but they're not. And, uh, and let's look at why. Click. Wonderful. God had promised in the Old Testament that Messiah would come. And that his name, he would be born of a virgin, and his name would be Emmanuel. And, and throughout the entire story of the Old Testament, we see examples of God wanting to be with us, with man. At, in the very beginning, in the story of Adam and Eve, it says that God walked with Adam daily in the garden. Wow, how, how much more with man could you get than that? Can you imagine the experience of God walking with you physically in the garden every day? And, and that's Old Testament. What we have is so much better, by the way. We're going to get to that. Next one, Moses. Moses met with God face to face. What an amazing God we have who wants to be with us. The three men in the fiery furnace. You know, I, I bought a new car in July and uh, I wanted the one with the GPS built in because I get lost really, really easily. And uh, in order to get the one with the GPS, I had to have the moon roof and uh, the, the luxurious carpeting and um, four or five other features. So, I, I mean, I got a top of the line car, but it came with serious radio. And, uh, um, and I was supposed to get three months of free satellite radio. I, I'm into my seventh month and they, it still hasn't run out. I don't know what happened. God has given me serious radio. Uh, so, I, I had already determined that when the time was up, I wasn't going to renew because the stuff I listen to, I can get on FM or, or I can put CDs in. I have fallen in love with the Southern Gospel Channel. I, it, it, it's almost on as much as the classic rock and roll station. Uh, and... and uh, the music kind of speaks, I'm a, a, a guy that, that music speaks to. I've got to tell you, a couple of times 
I've been driving between Brossard and, and Ganawage, and, and Sirius Radio has been on, and something has come on, and I have to pull my car over to the side of the road because it touches me deep within my spirit, and I start to cry, and you can't, I can't see, and so I've got to pull the car over. It's, it, I mean, it's just it's amazing how it speaks to me. But there was, a, there was this song uh, that I was listening to, a, a kind of a, a, a really interesting song. In the song, this young boy apparently goes to his mom and, and asks about the story of uh, the three men in the fiery furnace. And she tells him the story and she's told it to him again and again through his childhood that when the king looked in and the king's guards looked in, there were four men in the furnace. And in the song, I don't want you to build theology off of this. It's not Bible, right? It's just cute. But in the song, the, uh, the, the little boy says to his mom, three men came out of the furnace. When they looked in, they saw four, but only three men came out of the furnace. Where is the fourth man? And the mom replies, he's still in the furnace. And when you go through times of trial and testing that you cannot believe that you can get through, the fourth man is in the furnace. God with us. Can you imagine a greater witness to the truth in the Old Testament that God wants to be with us than, than the story of the fourth man in the fiery furnace? And so, next slide, the Old Covenant is filled with this kind of stuff. Uh, the slide says, no matter how smooth or how rough this day, God is with us each step of the way. Or, from Scripture, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The, the people in Old Testament times knew the reality of God wanting to be with them. So it's not just a New Testament idea. Next slide. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Who can hide in the secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord? Do not I feel heaven and earth, declares the Lord. The promise of God always being present, always being near. Isn't that a wonderful promise? Well, yes and no. You ever had visitors come and, and live in your house for a while? It's wonderful. Day one, day two, day three. But by day four, it would be nice if they weren't visitors anymore, right? <laughs> because you end up eating at their time, their kind of food. You can't watch your favorite TV shows because they have some preferences about things that they watch or things that they don't like to see. And, and, and after a while, it becomes very invasive of your personal space. You know, I, 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 I like my personal space. I'm a, I'm, a very, I'm, I'm a very transparent person, apparently, in a public venue. Uh, but the real me is extremely private. And so there are times when... I don't want my personal space invaded. And I have to tell you, there have been moments in my Christian experience where I've said to God, back off and leave me some space. Confession is good for the soul, not wonderful for the reputation. <laughs> But God wants to be with us. Not just an occasional Sunday experience. God wants to be in your personal space. When it suits you. When it doesn't suit you. So, I, 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 you know what? Here's the application. Give him a little more space. And when it feels uncomfortable, <laughs> you need to figure out what in you has made this 
relationship that God wants to have with you uncomfortable. And it's not because he's a bad visitor. <laughs> right? Next slide. Why do we need Emmanuel? Why do we need God with us if this old covenant is true? Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor is ear too dull to hear. Your iniquities have separated you from your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear you. I'm sure uh, most of you or many of you are familiar with something called the bridge illustration. Uh, you know, man on one side, there's a huge gap caused by sin, God on the other side. Every time we develop uh, these illustrations or analogies to help us understand God or our relationship with him, they're helpful to a point, but if we, if we take them too far, they, uh, they become really uh, troublesome and, and, and lead us into wrong thinking. And, and, you know, this is really true. Sin makes it difficult for us to approach God. God has the solution for that, of course. But sin has never prevented God from wanting to be with us. Jesus is the good shepherd, right, who, who leaves the ninety and nine and goes after one stupid, wandering sheep. I mean, you're sitting here this morning and you, you probably think you're, you're in the ninety-nine, but I'm going to tell you most of you are the one that the Lord wants to, to seek after and to be with more and more and more. Manual, God with us. And God, nothing can prevent God from wanting to be with us. His people, his children. Next slide. <laughs> there we are. So, never knew, ever knew. What, what is so new then about this God being with us in the New Testament setting? Next slide. John chapter 1, verse 14. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The incarnation. God being born in the flesh. The eternal God, Jesus, preexistent before anything else was there, chose to come and be born in human form. He tabernacled among us. <laughs> We, we were discussing in the translation booth how you were going to translate that. Il a tabernacle avec nous. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't quite work. And if you want to be really like very Christian, il a tabarouette avec nous, I guess. I don't know. But uh, God established himself with us, present with us. The tabernacle was, was the tent of God's presence. And, and the entire presence of God, the glorious God, came to live in human form. Next slide. He had to come and be born in human form because God's plan for salvation from before the beginning of time was that Jesus would die. He is the lamb slain from the cre creation of the world. If, if God was himself going to be slain, he would have to be in a human fleshly form. And so it was a part of God's plan from the beginning to be with us to the point where he would even come incarnate to be with us, beside us, near us. Here's the next, uh, the next scripture from Hebrews, which talks about uh, God being with us. Now that we know what we have, Jesus, this great high priest with ready access to God, let us not let it slip through our fingers. We don't have a priest who is out of touch with our reality, but he has been through weakness and testing, experienced it all, all but the sin, so let us walk right up to him 
and get what he is so ready to give. Take the mercy, accept the help. You know, if I were to have come down with some very, very strange uh, medical condition uh, and uh, the remediation for that condition were some extremely expensive medical treatments that aren't covered under your cute little carte soleil. And, uh, and I, I was sitting at home one day bemoaning my, my illness and my weakness and, and uh, the fact that I couldn't afford whatever the treatment was. And uh, suddenly up popped my email and there was a, a wonderful email from none other than Queen Elizabeth herself saying, my dear Mr. McCann, it has come to my attention uh, that you are suffering with this uh, medical ailment. Uh, please uh, be aware that the crown uh, is concerned. Wow. Yours truly, Elizabeth the Queen. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> I mean, how concerned is the Queen about my medical condition? But if suddenly my doorbell were to ring and there, were, there was Prince William with a, a check to cover my full medical treatment signed by the Counselor of the Exchequer of the United Kingdom, that would be a whole other expression of concern that would suddenly be very real, right? And so God came to be with us in human form as the absolute convincing proof that he wants to be with us, that he cares for us. He cares for us in our, our best moments. He cares for us in our worst moments. God wants to be with us. Next slide. Think about... Um, the story of, of Jesus. Three years of earthly ministry. Wonderful time being with a number of, of people. Being God with them. In spite of the fact that they, they, they misunderstood and misinterpreted. And then the tragic end. The death on the cross. Or the, the less than tragic end. When you consider how the story goes on. Because there's resurrection. And the promise of this incarnate God who wants to be with us goes on, isn't it? The, 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 Jesus' final words before he ascends to heaven are what? <laughs> Surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. God wants to be with us always. Nothing, including death, is going to get in the way. What's the, the ongoing proof of that? God with us. One night, the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. Do not be afraid. Keep on speaking. Do not be silent, for I am with you. No one is going to attack and harm you because I have many people in this city. Wouldn't that be wonderful to be convinced that like the, the three boys in the fiery furnace, that if we really believe that God was with us, that that could represent protection for us in a time of trial, in a time of need. Next slide. But the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it, and I was delivered from the lion's mouth. Freedom to be able to, to, to preach the gospel, to share the good news about God, because... He is with us. God wants to be in close relationship with us, each and every one of us, every moment of every day. God wants to be Emmanuel. He wants to be God with us. In a moment, we're going to bring up a video clip. But we're just going to wait for a moment before we do. Sound is ready. And uh, 
I think it'll be good enough. If it's not, we can dim the lights when it, when it goes on. You can move over to there. This, uh, what if, here, here's what I want to say. What if what I have been sharing with you for the past 20 minutes, what if it were really true? What if this isn't just a, an exercise in filling in Sunday morning with words? If it were really, really true that Jesus is Emmanuel, that God wants to be in relationship with us in every part of our daily lives, what would that be like? Click. Heavenly Father, we love your precious name. It stands to reason that a name is just a word. It can be easily forgotten as soon as it is heard. One name was spoken before the world's first day And it will be here when everything that is has passed away Delivered from the lips of God Mary's ears on angels' wings Jesus, Jesus The word that came to life for us
So what are the implications? God wants to be with us. Jesus came as Emmanuel, as a substantive proof that God wants relationship with us. So what do we do in response to that? Well, I, I jotted down a few ideas, and, uh, and you probably need to add to them from what God has spoken to you in the Spirit. I choose to believe God wants a relationship with me. That's a choice, right? And, I, and I'm renewed and refreshed in that. And I, I'm willing to let him invade my TV time. Because God has promised to be present in my everyday experiences, I will expect him and I will look for him. Somebody gave me a, a book last year called When God Winks. And isn't it wonderful when, when you realize that God's hand has been so in something that you've experienced in daily life? God wants to be with us every day. Why should we not experience a wink from God every day? I will walk with God. Like that? Yeah. No. <laughs> That's religious. The better one. I will allow God to walk with me. He's the one who wants it first, right? Yeah. Now, admittedly, we want to respond. But I just want to kind of put the emphasis there. Next. I will expect to hear from God personally this week that he would speak to me deep down in my spirit. I will trust God to be present in my trials and temptations. Where is the fourth man? He's still in the furnace. He will be there with us. I will recite, remember, rehearse, the promises of God's presence by writing them out, by putting them on post-its in places that remind me, by blogging, by memorizing, by telling others. Best way to hold on to any truth that you get from God is to share it with somebody. Because things that are fuzzy, when you have to explain them to somebody else, get real clear, or you'll be so convinced that they're fuzzy that you need to go back to the drawing board. Either case, that's wonderful. I will trust the presence of God to provide me the strength I need to overcome fear and to offer courageous service wherever God will take me. Number nine, number ten, number eleven, number twelve. How do you apply the truths? They'll call his name Emmanuel. God with us. That little preposition says that the relationship between God and us is that he wants to be with us. Wasn't I brilliant? <laughs> well, that's it. Um, Amen. Be blessed. Um, I just waiting for one moment of clarity. I'm gonna. We're gonna officially close the meeting, but I want to pray for as many of you as would like prayer. Um, I don't know what God's gonna do as we pray for you. There's a wonderful Quebecois tradition, which is almost dead, where on New Year's Eve, during the, the Réveillon, the uh, old, youngest child, 
oldest child, would go to the, to the senior patriarch and ask for the blessing for the year that lies ahead. And, and the, the, the oldest patriarch would lay his hands and actually speak a blessing over the year and over the, over, uh, over the children. Well, I'm, I'm old enough to be a father to many of you. I'm a spiritual father to a few of you. Uh, but I just, I just want to have the occasion to pray at this period of transition. Just to pray a blessing over you. Um, and so we'll invite you if you, if you want to stay for, for prayer. If you, if you want to leave, that's fine. Um, leave with my blessing. I'm just trying to sense whether we're going to see one more short video clip. Yeah, we are. Um, I, was, I was listening to Sirius Radio on my way to church one Sunday morning. And I had one of those moments when I had to pull my car over to the side of the road. Um, we're, not, we're not blessed with a, uh, an amazing worship team in Ganawagi. Sometimes worship, in fact, worship this morning is um, Francis singing a cappella and encouraging the congregation to sing along to some hymns. Sometimes worship is me. Uh, not wonderful, but it's what we have. And sometimes we have an amazing pianist who is a real blessing when she's there. So we supplement that sometimes with um, recorded music. And um, I like to play with PowerPoint. And so I heard this song. It reminded me of uh, my early beginnings as a Christian. I remember when our pastor used to have pastoral prayer. And there was a young man who was at the back of the church. And he would always put his hand up and say, I have an unspoken request. And I used to think that was the silliest thing in the world, you know. Uh, a number of years ago, now that he's, he's a full-grown man, um, in fact, I think he just retired, um, I, I came to know something about his life and his experience. I understand why he was not something he wanted to express. And uh, the song that I heard is called An Unspoken Request. And I've just PowerPointed it with the words. Uh, I'm going to turn off my microphone for this because uh, I'm going to have to sing when it comes to the, to the chorus. And uh, it's not pretty through this thing. <laughs> sorts of reverb and... Uh, you know, they have things now that adjust all of this. You've, you can sing right in between and it still makes it right, don't they? I don't have that. The preacher got up and said, Stand to your feet. We'll start with a prayer. If you have a need, let it be heard, saints. Let it be known. We're all family and you're not alone But that's when he saw her in the back of the church Her silence and sadness cried out the hurt The kind shepherd knew just what to say Spoken request Does anybody have one here tonight? Did you come with a burden you can't share? A need in your life? Just lift up your hand to the one who can give you God can hear an unspoken request. Well, the preacher whispered as she 
raised her hand. Sweet Holy Spirit, come by her and stand. When her tears started flowing, he had no doubt that in the throne room of heaven, her secret was out. An unspoken request. Does anybody have one here tonight? Did you come with a burden you can't share? A deed in your life. Just lift up your hand to the one who can give you rest. Child, have no fear. Our God can hear. An unspoken request. Does anybody have one here tonight? Did you come with a burden you can't share? A need in your life. Just lift up your hand to the one who can give you rest. Child, have no fear. Our God can hear an unspoken request. Not everyone is, is uh, comfortable. Not everyone is uh, always available to come forward for prayer. Um, and so as we bring this meeting to, uh, to a close, if you have an unspoken request, if you would like prayer but you don't want to go through the business of coming forward, I, I want you just to, to raise your hand. I, I have some requests. Holy Spirit, come and stand by us now. Jesus Emmanuel, with us. You know every heart. You are the one that can meet every need. We give you our family and our, our friends who need desperately to know you. give you our stumbling and, and weak moments of faith. Give you our, our deep pain, our doubt. My child, have no fear. Our God can hear an unspoken request. Wow. Holy Spirit, move. Hallelujah.